This conference will now be recorded. We have financial review problem one. And let me just clear this out for a second. And the way this problem was originally set up was we had beginning balances and the retained earnings balance was missing. The retained earnings balance was missing. And so whenever we have beginning balances, when we work a problem, when we work a problem, we put these beginning balances into the T accounts. So only problem, now for the new students, you don't have beginning balances uh, for Tuesday. But for the continuing students, they have beginning balances, but there's a question mark around one of the accounts. And so they've got to calculate what this retained earnings balance is. So Miriam, would you go through the calculation of the retained earnings balance for me? I kid you not, Mr. Boy. Uh, I was also confused on that. <laughs> so I was hoping you would walk us through. <laughs> I'm going to walk you through. Uh, well, see, if I walk you through, you lose, your, you lose a point. So uh, let me see who's, who's going to volunteer to walk us through that. Going once. Going I will. Once. Who volunteered? Kiana. Kiana. Okay. okay, go ahead. All right. So basically, each of them just are either a credit or a debit balance. So, and if you don't know, they're all on the 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 sheet. You know, like it'll say if it's a credit or a debit balance. So accounts payable. 200,000, that's a credit balance. So it'd be like on the credit side. Okay, and then so accounts receivable. Oh, go ahead. Let me just say this. You know, you should have your chart of accounts and you, you should have realized by this time you should have a hard oh. copy of this. But on the chart of accounts, it tells you in B what the normal balance of an account is. So whenever you prepare a trial balance, these NDs tell you in general what the amount should be. The only one that can vary is retained earnings. It can be a credit balance, but that means that the company is losing money. So if, it's, if it has a debit balance, that's a problem. If it has a credit balance, that's good. But that's the only account that can have, you know, the others can too, but if it, as we're calculating, these are the balances. So, so on your chart of accounts, which you're using, is telling you what the balance in all the accounts should be. Okay. And all of you should have that. I think that's in course content. So a payable has a 200 credit balance. What about receivables? Would be a debit balance of 300,000. Inventory. Debit balance of 500,000. Equipment. And then it is also a debit balance of 400,000. Those payable. It's a credit balance. 300,000. Cash. A debit balance of 100. Like depreciation. That's a credit balance. One sixty. Notes payable. Credit. Um. Yeah. Credit balance. Common um, stock. It's also a credit balance. So we know that. All of these balances have to equal. So if I add up the credits, how much do I have? If I just add up these credits that we have. Is that 1.3 million? 
Yeah. One, 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 three, sixty. One hundred. Four sixty, right? And this a million four sixty. Something like that. I just know credit is more by one sixty. I don't remember what the number was. Well, we just added these numbers up, and this is why we like to working Excel all the time. Mm -hmm. we can do that, but I'm just you know going through the document now. Then if I add up the debits, how much do I have right now? One million three hundred. Okay. So if we're at a million three hundred. And these accounts have to balance. The retained earnings have to have what kind of a balance? A debit balance. It's gonna have a debit balance of 160,000. And that's gonna give us the million four sixty. Okay, so starting point, you know, I'm testing or checking on several things. Do you know the normal balances of the accounts? And do you know how to use the accounting equation? Uh, uh, knowing that the, the trial balance is going to be equal, that you add up the debits and credits and that difference. I could have had this number. I could have a question mark about any account here. I could have had a question mark by cash. Okay. So, I can, so there can be a question mark anywhere that you expect to make this calculation. Any question on that now, Miriam? No more questions. Um, except one. Do we add this while to the, to our current balance that like our journal entries, or is this something we can just put to the side? We never put it to the side. We did it first. Let's go to our spreadsheet. Uh, where's our spreadsheet? Uh, so, uh, new students make a copy of this plus journal entry type. Make a copy of the trial balance. I meant the uh, the accounts you're using and their normal balances and those journal entry types. Okay, let's go to our spreadsheet. And our spreadsheet has tabs for journal entries, T accounts, trial balance, closing entry, statement of cash flow, inventory chart. Since we have beginning balances, we are gonna go to the T accounts tab. Let me just clear these out. Okay, so so what we want to do now is to put these balances uh, in. We have beginning balances, so what we do, so how much cash are we going to start off beginning? A hundred thousand. And what I'm going to do is to See if this will come in green. No, that's not a good color. Blue. That's not a good color. Uh, that's not a good color. We'll put these beginning balances in red. How much do we have in receivables? $300,000. So we put them in red so that we know that these are beginning balances. 
inventory has how much? 500,000. 500,000. Okay. Accounts receivable is 300. Thank you. <clears throat> Supplies, do we have any? What's the no. next thing? Do we have equipment? Yes, 400,000. 400,000. I'll just change this to equipment. What's so our next one? Oh, we write a common stock. How much is in common stock? Two hundred thousand. <clears throat> then accounts payable was what? Two hundred thousand. Notice that we are putting these on the debit or credit side as they were. Then the notes peb, we had two of those, correct? How much were they? We had the two notes. 300,000 to 600,000. 300,000 and how much? 600,000. So the total is 800. The total will be nine. <laughs> and accumulate depreciation was how much? One sixty. One hundred sixty And retain earnings, we said it was a good idea. Yeah. Uh, Let's see. Credit. Or debt. No, no we uh, said it was a debit. We have the left, left side. Everyone on the left side. Where is the problem at? Uh -huh. We said it was a debit of one six. So all we've done. If it's on the debit side in these preliminary entries, it goes on the debit and the T account. If it goes it's on the credit side, it goes on the credit side. So it's on the debit side. So we got one six zero comma zero zero zero. Are those all of our beginning balances? Is that everything? Because now the key thing is to put these beginning balance, like if you left retained earnings out, then you would never balance when you went to the trial balance. So are there any questions from anyone on where we are now? Are there any questions? I got a question about later. Okay. Uh, it was on the inventory chart. Um, my mind just automatically told me to do FIFO. Is that right? <laughs> well, what are the problems? Uh, I, don't, I didn't see that it told me. To store, do it's in small print, so I guess you didn't see it. The store utilizes weighted average inventory method. Ah. Uh, it's in small was, print, so you may have missed it. I was not paying attention. OK. Now that we've got these beginning balances in, we are ready to record some journal entries. When we record journal entries, 
we have our journal entry types here. If cash is coming in, it's a one through six. If cash is paid out, it's seven through 11A. Then we have the asset transactions other than cash. And when we work with journal entries, when you're working with this chart, we read the description of what's happened, then we find out where it is on this chart. The chart tells us what to debit and what the credit. And so we're not actually using additional paid in capital. And we, you know, there's some times we could, but we're just issuing additional stock uh, with our first entry. So are there any questions from anybody on how we use this chart? We read the transactions. So what is this first act uh, transaction, Karina? Okay, so you want me to read it? Mm-hmm. So the first one says repurchased from shareholders fifty thousand of previous issue stock. So, so we we're repurchasing from shareholders of fifty thousand of previously issued stock. What is our type? So that's going to be type one, and you're going to debit cash and credit common stock for fifty thousand. Hmm. Notice it said that we repurchased stock that had been previously issued. So we didn't issue stock, we repurchased stock. So whenever we pay out cash, we end up paying out cash, so we cannot be in the types one through six. We got to go into type 7 through 11a so what is our type i can't hear you bro So we get around to make our first journal entry. Oh, would it be an asset purchased type seven? You didn't purchase an asset. We repurchased the um our stock. That's correct. All right, so it's kind of, we're just buying stock, so it's a type one. Is it eleven A? Who's that? A? Chris? Was that Craig or Curtis? Who said that? Chris. Craig. 11A. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, you stock from I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to Move Chris yeah. to the A group right away. No, nah, we it's, good. Nah, we good. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, that was good, you know, to pick that up. Because you, you didn't have my class before, correct? No, I didn't. Okay, so that's good. So, as Chris uh, said, it was a purchase of treasury stock. We had issued the stock, we bought it back. What do we debit? A stock? Treasury stock? You debit treasury stock. Which is 14, you're going to credit cash, which is 100. Hey, we got it, we're getting it now. So we debited for 10, we buy our stock back for 1.0. Then we credit in cash 100. Mm -hmm. What's our amount? 50,000. 50,000. We said this was a tight what? 11A. 11A. 
And of course, you know, continuing students, we got to work on our cash flow statement. Where does this go on the cash flow statement? Where does it go on the cash flow statement? Well, cash is involved, so it's got to go on the cash flow statement, right? Part one, two, or three. So far, ah, uh, no, part one is always operation. Will it be part three? It's going to be part three. And we'll talk about this as we prepare the statement. Okay, and Mr. Boy, just for like clarification. So whenever, like, if we're just buying back stocks from a different company, that's going to be 11A, right? Like our stock, we're buying companies at times will buy back their own stock. So okay. they're buying their own stock back. <clears throat> so is there a difference between buying our own stock and buying somebody else's? Yes. Okay, so buying someone else's would be common stock, buying our own treasury stock. Now, if you issue, if you issue stock, type one. Okay. If you issue stock, type one, debit, cash, and credit, common stock. If you buy stock of another company, we down here seven, where the asset purchase, I'm running my company, JSJ Run Car. I purchased some Apple stock. I would debit investments and credit cash, and that investment would be in Apple stock. So I start my company. I'm doing well. I want some stock to buy either Apple or Microsoft. So we said Apple here. So we debit investment Apple and credit cash. That's a tax seven. Then if I, <laughs> I buy back some of my stock, and sometimes companies would do this because uh, they want to reduce the number of shares outstanding and for other reasons, the fewer the shares you have outstanding, the higher your earnings per share is and the higher your stock price is, finance majors. So Cutting this body treasury stock so that that earnings per share, a key uh, determinant of, of selling price of the stock, if they got fewer shares, then that price goes back. It's going to go higher. So those are different types of transactions. Issuing your own stock, type 1. Buying your own stock back, type 11A. Buying the stock of another company, that's going to be a type seven. You purchasing an asset. Okay, so that makes sense. Makes sense. Good. Now, what's the next thing we need to do here? I have a question. Yes. What is the location part? Where did they come from? We eventually have to prepare a statement of cash flow. So that's a good question. There are three parts of the statement of cash flow. How much from operations, how much from investments, and how much from financing. We talk about this from the standpoint of you as an individual. For you as an individual, you want your main cash, let's just say when you graduate, you want your cash to come from salary. A company wants its cash to come from operations. Macy's wants its cash coming from the sale of clothes. Now, suppose you know, when you graduate, you typically would like to buy some assets. So this is negative cash flow from investments. But suppose you sell your car and go to Las Vegas and have a good time and come back. What's going to happen when you get back? You may not be able to get to work to get your offer your salary. Well, with the company, the same thing. We would rather for the company to be buying additional assets. Uh, you graduate, you buy additional assets than to sell your assets. So we want this number to be negative. And then the cash flow from financing, you know, this is how the company is financed. 
Typically, it can be financed from issuing stock, but it can also be financed from uh, borrowing. We want this number to negative because you pay back borrowing. That is, when you graduate, you want to have enough salary. Let's just say a hundred thousand. And we're going to find a company that's going to operate the same way. When you graduate, you want enough salary, 100000 so you can buy you a new house or a new car. Let's just say that's 30000 So that's going to be a minus 30000 You want, you know, you graduate, you want to be able to buy some new things. You also want to be able to pay off your student loans. Uh, let it up for me. Let me just put this 20000 in here. Let's see. Let me undo, undo. I don't like those negative signs. So when you graduate, let's assume that you want to buy some more new assets, 30000 coming. What I'll do, I'll just put them in red, meaning that you spent money. Then you want to be able to pay off some of your student loans. So you want this number negative. And you want to have some cash left over. So that should be sort of your goal. So if you made 100000 you bought some new assets. And if you paid off some loans, you know, you'd have 50000 left over. So when you begin to look at a company, you, a company, you got to evaluate that company the same way. A company needs positive money from operations that's his salary and so his revenues have to exceed his expenses we want this number negative which means that they expand it and we want the company to be paying off debts though it may be borrowing too and still be positive so you've got to look at a company the same way you would look at yourself for the new students you will not have to learn this method because this method assumes there's only a few cash transactions. The next chapter we go into is a statement of cash flow. And we go into that chapter, we'll cover all of this again. So the new students in your uh, problem, you don't have to do this. But that's a good question in terms of where we are. So all we're doing is saying where it's going to go on that cash flow statement. Of course, the next thing we need to do with this journal entry what is the next thing that we need to do with this journal entry? Put it in the T-charts. Put it in the T-charts. So we're going to go to the T-accounts. And There's somewhere. Where can I put it at? So I put it here, so I'm just putting in a new account here. So this is just a template and you and then you put in new account and so we're gonna clear contents. And so what am I gonna do uh, with this treasury stock? So I have it here. 
So we saying we debiting treasure stock for how much? Fifty thousand. So whenever there is a journal entry, if it's on the debit side in the journal entry, it's gonna be on the debit side in the ledger. And we're gonna credit what? Cash. We're crediting cash for fifty thousand. What else we gonna do? Where you just well, you can add them up, but I wouldn't like that's too early to add all that up right now. But since we want to keep track of these journal entries, we have thousands of journal entries, and we want to make sure yes, when we check them for errors, we're gonna go in here and say what. This was transaction one. I'm gonna go over here about us fifty thousand. So if we just happen not to balance, right, Brooke will will be able to know how to check each journal entry out, see if we post it right. Are there any questions on what we've done so far of that first journal entry? All right, let's go to the next journal entry in our problem. And what's our next journal entry? Boom. We purchased 8,000 in supplies on account. What's our tight? Seven. Uh, says we purchased on, purchase on account. So it's gonna be up here. It's gonna be a twelve. <clears throat> so one through eleven <throat> can't turn out to be involved. We bought it on account. So we are gonna debit the asset purchased and credit the line bill to create it. <laughs> And so we're going to simply do what? Uh, supplies debit to account you payable. Yeah, what she said. What she said? <laughs> she said debit supplies and then credit accounts payable for 8000 I'm not going to have me switch <laughs> students early on in terms of who's an A student and who's not right. I'm gonna need to do some switching. Huh? Am I gonna need to do some switching? And was, you, you can switch me, Mr. Boy. Last semester I was a C student. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, I've talked to the A students since they're so quiet. Just their problem. What's the count I'm number so for supplies? Okay. Hey, supplies is one thirty. Other people do it. At the end of the day, what's the count payable? Uh, 301. What are we going to debit? How much is the dot supplies debit? 8,000. Now let's post this to the ledger. So we're gonna go to supplies, put in what? 8,000. 8, so what by two right? So that's transaction two. We're gonna yeah. go down credit accounts payable for 8,000. 8, Are there any questions from anybody on what we're doing? Are there any questions from anybody on what we're doing? Can everybody do this? Yes. Is the Can document where it tells you, is the document where it tells you the types on your uh, uh, blackboard? Put that again. The types. 
Yeah, is this a uh, worksheet this on the course the work sheet, This worksheet, as well as the, you know, that the tanks and uh, T accounts, the chart of accounts, that should all be in Blackboard uh, under uh, financial review. So there's a tab, financial review, and all of this information is there. Okay. Are there other questions? Okay. What's our next journal entry? So hopefully you go on and pull up these types and everything now. Let's see if I can find where my problem went. Just purchase five thousand shoes at one twenty five each. Purchase five thousand pairs of shoes at one twenty five each. So what we're we gonna debit? Shoes. Inventory. Inventory. What we're we gonna credit? Accounts payable. Now we buy inventory. We're crediting accounts payable. What's <laughs> our account numbers? One twenty. One three oh three. So now we gotta post us to the T accounts, correct? How much was our amount though? Six twenty five. We got the six twenty five and then we're gonna put this in the T accounts, correct? Let's put a three here. What else we're gonna do? Post it on our inventory. This for weighted average. We're not waiting yet, but we're gonna go to our inventory flow chart. Right, yeah. But uh, we got five thousand purchase. The unit cost was one twenty five. So the total cost we said was what six twenty five? Yeah, did you put the beginning? No, I did not. You gotta put the beginning on there for them. And what did we have in the beginning? Um, we had 5,000 at 100 each. How much is that? 500,000. So we should have put this in when we first put the 500 in that T account. But yeah, any you know, any inventory, we putting this on this inventory tab so that we can keep track of the inventory. Uh, and our key thing is, you know, looking at column three cost of goods sold when we make a sale. What's our next journal entry? Did everybody in here? have inventory accounting. Is there anybody who has not had inventory accounting? That's good. Okay, so what I want now is everybody to make this journal entry. Journal entry for a cash sale of 6,000 pairs of shoes at 120. I want everybody to make that journal entry. Oh, 
give you, I'm going to give you everybody five minutes. Uh, that's account receivable debit to sales. Say that again. Uh, account receivable to sales. Yeah, but I'm giving everybody five minutes because I just want to. Okay. I'm going to give everybody five minutes. But I want to make that calculation. And when we sell inventory, we know what? There's always two journal entries. So everybody take a few minutes and work on it. Y'all have this drone entry made? This is drone entry made. What number four? Yeah, number four. Wasn't the one y'all wasn't that the one y'all were working on? I guess so. Um, Didn't I give y'all five minutes to make a journal entry? Yep, yep, yep. Well, five minutes is up. Uh, Lion says, has not been five minutes.
Okay, is that five minutes? Here's that five minutes. Okay, so Usha, you want to give these interests to us? Oh, yes. Is that how to pronounce your name? Uh, Usha. Usha, okay. Okay. So the first entry is uh, inventory debit to account payable. Uh, it's 12 lakh. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, it's 12 lakh. And the second entry is account receivable debit to sales. It's sorry, sorry. Uh, the first entry is inventory debit to account receivable. It's 2 lakh. And the second entry is a wait. <laughs> okay, wait. We're on number four, and it's a cash sale. 